متتالية اللهم أعد علينا هجا أعواما متتالية وارزقنا الزهادة في دار الفانية وارفع منازلنا في جنة عالية يا الله اللهم رب هذه دعوة الصادقة الحق وكلمة التقوى أهينا عليها وامتنا عليها وبعثنا عليها كم يكون ما كوزان عدين برابي أسرع وزان ليجر سنا ويكون شيطان كتوني وان سور تلو ما شيطان أني شيطان كتو كشيطان أقبل هات باري ومباشي موا كم لا عدين شان تبعنا ونكبر نوما بات دنجرت النية شلو ما شاء الله. I'm Dr. Nama Walolo. I'm the second born of Fajia Mariam. I hold a PhD in public policy from the University of Birmingham in England and a master's in international development from Carleton University in Canada and then an undergrad degree in population studies from the University of Cape Coast. Well, um, from primary school, I went to um, primary school around at the average age of, of five. Um, but, but the difference or what is outstanding is that I went to school, to secondary school at nine. Uh, I wrote the, it was the last batch of the um, ordinary school exams, uh, certificates, what we call, we used to call GCE uh, um, exams. And then, uh, I mean, school system. So my sister and my mom, well, my sister convincing my mom that it was the best thing to escape a new system, which was the senior secondary school system, and to go into, to finish off with the, with the, with the last batch of, yes, of the old levels. So I, I wrote the late entrance exams and then I passed and went into the boarding house, which was in Ghana secondary school. I, I don't remember now, but uh, probably I must have completed uh, Secondary school at probably 14 or 15, I'm not so sure. Um, maybe by the time I finished uh, sixth form, I was probably 16. Um, I'm not so sure, or seven. I had my PhD at 27. Yes, yeah, I had my PhD yes, at 27. And I did it in two and a half years, yes. Because I wanted to, I had been in school for too long and I didn't want to be in school any much longer than I already was. And so I just had to finish it, yes. Um, it, it, did, um, it did come with a lot of pressure in the beginning um, when we were growing up, because we grew up to a certain age before she started um, her dawa activities, her calls to Islam. So inadvertently, we, we became exposed to what, what was called so-called beauty, basically. So to be to to succumb to the new form of, of of or the new way of life was a bit challenging, and it put it exerted a lot of pressure on us. Um, certainly on me because I I mean all suddenly we needed to to, to wear the hijab and change or the 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 the. the to change to basically new normal, essentially. And um, it was challenging for us, and you had the whole societal perception of, of, of the daughter of Ajia Mariam being, okay, being looked at, you know. So she would, she would basically talk to us to put on the hijab. But out of respect for her, um, in the beginning, we will um, put on the hijab in her presence, and then when we go out, we take off the hijab um, uh, out of the respect because we were not accustomed to that. But as time went on, and, and we were affected in our hearts by and, and believed in what she preached, um, it took a natural turn um, to basically appreciating what she was talking about and internalizing it, but also practicing it. Um, so now it exists less of a pressure to be the daughter of, of Ajia Mariam uh, in terms of societal perception of who I am or who I should be um, to more of what my creator would perceive me as, 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 as a servant of his, basically. So that, that pressure has been alleviated, um, certainly, um, from me. So for now, um, I think of, of 
how I will account to my creator, not necessarily how I would account to Hajia Mariam. But of course, it's come, it came from, from her guidance um, and, and from her leadership as, as a mother. Um, so, so this is where I am right now. Look to this camera. Can you believe it? My man will yell 50 years, no argument. Not even once. Can you yell because you deserve? No. Before man and God. Not even once. This is your daughter. So, my mommy Ono <laughs> Not even what Hans won't manage me and my kid on some Sunday. Whether I'm right or I'm wrong, that's how we are. And I will never even be angry with her to the extent that this is not Oksaka and Susan in She has never done it. Not even one soul. I knew it was a last palm bella. Come on, or maybe we shall do come on, be. Come on, they won't be no bitch. Even if now I cry, she'll call me and tell me, Sada has done this and not another. And to be mommy, I won't be able to keep up. But I was going to get to be. To be mommy, yes, sir. Oh, cool, poor, come on, you're good time. I mean, then I'm ma. The papa so be no bitch. No, 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 no. I feel like, I hear. To eat it, yes, sir. Then that's a bad day. She has to see through that I love. Even though we argue, we argue, we argue, but if she's going to, look recently, just recently, we had some big argument and I was trying to, so even though maybe I may be wrong, I was trying to show something and she kept quiet. Later on she, she came to me, she drove to this place. 
You can't become Zona. Not that I was challenging you. No. I never challenged you. I thought I'm over. She brought people to come and apologize. Not because she overreacted. Can you imagine? Now, so. Man, no, no, no. I just want to get some. No. no. Who knows what? Now, there's a Michelle Bada. I hear you. Now, the child, I probably didn't get it. And there's a Uncle Dollar strictly. Now, there's a Michelle Bada. Hey. So to have no, not even argument. No, not even once. Fifty years, get into fifty years. I uh, hey, what is something years of marriage? And uh, so what else? So in Yulinya la M Sahada to Alolo, Maninya as Mariam first born. So to nearby point yeti, Maninya the very, very first uh, child of uh Ajimariam Alolo. So, maybe sometimes certain decisions going to take a cut and be a to to yellow one to Jenna, no, a call on the fabric too. No, being supported or Nigerian supported and high or speaker highly off a Oidana. So then the man got to me, Baza Hattie Baza Hayidan and Yonsi. Some of the fondest memories I have of, of my mom. Um, where, well, one of them is, um, is the fact that she, how she used to hold my hand, and then we basically walked to the market. And I was, I was probably one of the naughtiest, or maybe the naughtiest child, essentially. And uh, she would be holding my hand, and I'll just start loosening the grip, basically. And then before she knows, she knows that she gets to the market, and I'm not there. You know, <laughs> she doesn't know where I've gone. So this is, and then I come home. She's like, "Where did you go?" I've, probably run off to play somewhere. You know how Tamale is, there are lots of kids and then it's an open space basically. Um, and, and one of the things that over the years has stuck with me, um, when I was in England, I was in a residence with, we had, we co-shared an apartment um, where basically ha I had roommates basically as a student. And we had some issues with each other. We, we, we argued and we fought each other. Um, and one of the, the, the people living in the, the house belonged to her. So basically she called the police on the two of us who were renting the house. And um, we, we didn't agree, basically. So I called the other ones, they called their parents, and their parents were like, don't worry, it's okay, we'll come and get you out, and we we'll do this and we we'll do that. What right does this lady have to, you know, we are going to call the police, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. And then I decided, okay, everyone is calling their parents, they're giving them some comfort, right? Let me also call my mom and see what she would tell me. I called my mom and I tell her, narrate the whole story to her. She said, why would you pick up a fight? Why? 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 So because of this, just go back in there and tell her you're sorry. And it was clearly no fault of ours, basically. Um, so it's just to tell you, it, and over the time, over the years, it has resonated a lot. She probably doesn't even remember. But she's, she's a peacemaker, and it transcends in everything that she does, even with her children. I cannot go to Hajiya Mariam and tell her that uh, I fought with this, this person or that person. She would, she would just ask you, why? What, what, why should you, I mean, she doesn't even fathom, she cannot even fathom the fact that you, you would have an argument over what? You know, nothing moves her in that respect. So over the years, it's resonated well with me. I've tried to apply it. Sometimes I fail, sometimes I succeed. Uh, but, but she is a, a peacemaker and, and, and she has tried her best to, to, to make us or to, to guide us towards peace and, and loving um, of others, accepting differences, appreciating um, our differences, basically unifying around a common, go uh, a common goal. And if we don't have that differences, at least respect those differences, basically. I'm currently working at Oikos Capital Limited as the managing director and I'm a PhD candidate um, at the political science department at the University of Ghana. 
um, measuring public policy and international development. Um, I would describe my mom as a phenomenal woman, um, very hardworking, um, an Islamic intellectual, um, a very humble person as well, despite the fact that Allah has lifted her so high and blessed her with a lot of things, with knowledge, with um, other resources. She's still very humble and she respects everybody and um, she's um, very she, she's a very good person because she takes care of a lot of children a lot of orphans and everybody comes to her for help basically so i would just say she's a very good woman very phenomenal um, very different but she's also very disciplined yes she if we are her child and you are going wayward she won't let you go wayward. She will discipline you. She's been very instrumental in, in our lives, in her kids' lives, and all other people that have come across her. But in terms of education, obviously she's um, a very knowledgeable person. She likes to read. She likes to, um, to study hard. If you've been to her room before, I don't know if you have, and I'm sure you will, you will see that there are a lot of Islamic books there. You probably know if you have somewhere to sit and all that. So if you have such a woman as your mother, obviously you aspire to be the best in terms of um, secular education and even Islamic education. And in terms of personality wise, because she's very humble, she teaches, she brings you up to be a very humble person, um, just aspire to be the best of yourself and not be materialistic and worldly. So you tend to realize that um, my siblings and I, we, are, we live very moderate lives, even, though if we, even if we can, if we can afford it, we tend to live very humble and moderate life. And God-fearing, obviously, because she's very God-fearing, so she will instill that in you. And just helping other people when you can, yes, physically. Because there's been very strong pressure, and still pressure till date, because you have to live to that expectation. Academic-wise, you need to be the best of yourself because you can't just go and be anything else. It will go back to your mom and even your dad. So obviously you have to strive to be your best. In terms of um, personality and how you live your life, obviously you have to live a very strict Islamic life. You have to dress very well. Otherwise, if other people see you, she's always preaching on radio, on television, and she, people can't see you doing opposite of what she's preaching. So then there's that strong pressure for you to live a very straight life and not mess up your life. Oh, with the introduction to Islam, you were born into it. And, and the um, Arabic school is in your house. So obviously, it's your life. You, you grow up in it, basically. That's how you are introduced into it. So it, it's just a very normal thing. But in terms of um, fond memories of her, um, it's just maybe when we're kids, and every now and then they'll bring a kid home, or the person is an orphan, they'll bring, like that's how the kids just keep multiplying. Now you can't even count them, things like that. And when there's small food, she makes sure she shares it among everybody, whether you are her child or not. Actually, even you, those that were children, we didn't used to get it like, like those that were not her kids. Yes, so those are just the fond memories. And she's a very serious person in life, so maybe you might probably not get a very fun aspect of her. More serious, have you been to Makranta? Have you done this? You know that kind of thing, yes. Yeah. Those are the fun memories I have. So, when I was here, unlike a sister, Dr. Nama, I was born to be a pan. So, when I was born to be a sister, I was born to be a Quran, I was born to be a Quran, because I was born to be a school in Tamasco. So, I was born to be a Quran, but I was born to be a Quran two years ago, I was born to be a Quran. But me and that influence because I always wanted the best for her. Can influence her, can but I was born to be a Quran school. So, but I was born to be a Quran. Before coming to secondary school, I put na Quran ma, na yur karma pa. And it's a zone. I felt that I'm being nipam. There are best secondary school. So come there and on the boyfriend, boyfriend, we are not going to mind the phone. And bright bone, mama Akida. You know, because all the time now we are to come and hear. Eh. So la influence from childhood. Even though I'm not the best, I'm not going to mind the phone. I'm not going to be a co-ba niafa. 
so ba mi rai yirla wazu nko enyele bi ko gba gan yu ngbob makati chana wazu nim ne kata to wumdo wazu so irin la bin yahrma no mamma yetu aka ku yara gba manga nyine nye twema irin those kinds of advice won da tirma so then influence money halikan tana school so as na won ni sabro so kam destiny ni nyeshel so kam da tana by this time around mani yen dio fare ama sister won bi nyang so ni rabita because bi yargan da nyu o tabli da bo won bi yetu ora war for pam eh ko nim be dwet nga eh so so kam da tana kama mani because man da nyetar character wise nda man lamma man man physically character kan lan die go sulo ka die go bin shaka ama sister ngun ara kunyo ni sulo ami kunyo ni calmness ara nyu mi digarga eh eh so nti ngun da lab la la jinin pulongo so but nyam na win you come ngun nti nye ngun karm ngart za hafun fun ti za pa bu handla ngun toni nyam na win you ko understand e be so fun fun ngun ndir falma chana to go hope for the one day to go to do la sola ma for now as we speak won ka na won pi ga mane yana na won pi go zo won na fun because do me won de yelma na won pi ra ka na won ndol so ni la polo ama ma 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 nguna man zang ma pa activism polo i understand it so ma mdela canada so ni be canada ma afan mi yae canada ma mi di kala confidence ni yina ti yen ni yen zang la di ni leban tuma ni mal confidence shel nyela in zabi human rights zo dan kan nan da so canada ni biye ni mana ma mbi biye ni mana mbor la ar konko mbi la ni mana ka form ngo which is northern girl initiative tamal ngo ni ru song be de song be tin yar ngo bi chef chancel min tan tu ti organization ma be ka ti sponsor ka bi chan sukuro ka ti nan de workshops and asan ka ka empower girls at northern ngo so man man da'wa ni zan kwashe polo mbala ma canada ma 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 is a hamini ka ma eh selmin si min gban sabla tabi to jinda because selmin si yuna mi kama bi garti bin shakam nawo min namla ti zahakati nyeyim kam mi chang tang manen ti yani no in mal mentality shel kama in nyela selmin si gatama i bi garti chakati wuhi na kama ti za nyela yim so de tuma nam kama tunda tin jiyan wati zahami ni kama america min canada min selmin tan si police nima bi bi kurla gban sabla so ni jiyan won ji la police board zo un advice ba about how bin ni to bin to bin ni to save gban sabla sham to protect black people to make sure that police brutality the very affected black people dit tumaka man tumda so man zan la man lebe activist nkuto en zan la maybe na won ni da ma kwashe polo mbala ma but un hope ka ma nti en pila na ndi cheka en pi ka bi ka bi di fal ma biala some way or the other ngba sur ni na won ni na won dol sin basa ha kwadle ba na polo ka dol si tibbi ma za ha n kwadle polo aji maryam ni start bin shawo ma tabu bor ni re ni re na go nyanga to bor no chang tin o chang na dinya tin yen don o chende ni minya won yen dang ti chende to bi shaban yisr na ma za ha ka to degla mantor ma in take it forward i would describe her as a silent uh, force to reckon with basically um she's she's somebody who talks less um but her words are meaningful and um impactful basically and she's somebody who does not necessarily like to begrudge people um and she's managed to instill that in her children although i deviate sometimes from that but <laughs> but she's somebody who is who is very um who is a strong force she has a strong personality but yet a silent one um talks less but with meaning and it it touches you where you you least expect essentially and and and, and this is what has held us together as a unified um uh, family tukka man kana pure ala ji pure so on parle ko so rondo na wa na on tuma na ala fe no no gbana ne ka so ko kuma so de nirba a kiyama ko zan aljan da malu sara timinti ya iyal ma za ko zan aljan da malu sara sara ne to kar nim za ha nin kura ban biye ne ko so ba o to so ba kan so ne nin kura ma nin kura ma ba biye ke won o ku nyen nin kura won to nin en ku nyem shana de ti za la won la ko ku nan la kasa ko so re nambo na won ma pa mo ya ha ka zan le zo ndul so nyevale katien chakati tizaiti ya bata bana ne kalimatu la ilaha illa allah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam zo nguna tukati ya mposha man kuka ni mposha na manyi ngunku ka pasel nol ne ko nya wa'ar le ngun vela ngun malla allah akbar kam ichen tanga man kana da patu ba ka nor da ponsa ko ka pa pa wa'ar le ngun ne ma 